Here is a demo for getting started with event-driven Ansible and Ansible rulebooks. My name is Sean Cavanaugh. I'm a senior principal TMM with Red Hat. The real world is full of events that change the state of our software and systems. Our automation needs to be able to react to those events. We're introducing Ansible rulebook, which is a command line tool that allows you to recognize events that you care about and react accordingly by running a playbook or other actions. There are three main components to an Ansible rulebook. The first one is event sources. The sources of our events come from source plugins. These plugins define where we are listening for our events. The second piece is a condition. The conditional statements in the rulebook allow us to match criteria on which we want to have some kind of response to. The last piece is our action. The action is our response once the condition has been met from the event source. This can be to trigger remediation, log a ticket for observation, or generate other events which we would want to respond to. Currently, we have a number of source plugins. However, this list is being developed, and as more partners get involved in this project, the list will expand. Here's our lab environment. Everything that we just went over can actually be found in the instructions here, and you can find this lab on ansible.com if you click on the Learn tab. What we're going to do is look at an existing rulebook here. This is a webhook example listening on port 5000. You'll see the directions here, exactly what we can run. So I'm going to go down and collect the rulebook we're going to run the Ansible rulebook command in another tab. And we're going to run this, this rulebook, which is listening to port 5000. When this rulebook runs, you'll see that it's waiting and it's just listening, waiting for that decision factor. When we looked back at that diagram I showed earlier. The first thing I'm going to do is send an, a uh, message, a little curl message to keep this really simple, that just says Ansible's all right. It's going to see that message since we have verbosity on, but it says that nothing's going to happen because we're not listening for Ansible's all right. We want to know if Ansible is super cool. So I'll go back to my terminal and I'll send a new curl message that says Ansible is super cool. Kick that off. And then where it's running, it will kick off the automation and says, thank you, my friend. And we can go back and look at the exact playbook. We can see here that it, it says say what playbook. We simply go down to the say what playbook and we can see it's a very simple debug message. So an event kicked off automation and allowed us to run a playbook immediately. For the second example source, we're gonna use a Kafka uh, source. So here we have a host name broker, port 9092, uh, EDA topic, and we actually have a Kafka terminal here. So we're gonna kick off the rulebook again, and we can see this Ansible rulebook dash dash rules where we feed it the Kafka example, which is this file right here, and then the same inventory file that we used last time. So here's our inventory file, it's just localhost. And then we're putting this in verbose mode again. So I will cut and paste, easy, it's listening. And then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna log in to the uh, Kafka queue. So the first thing we need to do is click this tab, go into the Kafka console, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna send a message, but it's not the message we're looking for. So if we go back to the editor and we look at the Kafka example, we are looking for a condition where the message says Ansible is cool, and we're gonna send not that and see what happens. So we said Ansible is good. I mean, we know it's good. We know it's great. We can actually see Ansible is good uh, come across. And if I send that again, nothing's going to happen. It sees the message come by, but nothing's happening. But if I switch to Ansible is cool, we'll go back here. And again, it says a condition has been met run the say what playbook and it says thank you my friend so the same idea is a very simple a rule and condition are set up for that source and you can see how an ansible rulebook can become extremely powerful and plug into multiple different sources okay for my final example today this is my favorite so last but not least is we're actually checking the status of a web server so we're checking if the web server is up or if the web server is down. And we have two different conditions depending on uh, what, or uh, two different actions depending on what condition. So the first one is if it's up, we're gonna run this playbook called Wowza. And Wowza says all is up 
and well, and it lets us know that. Now you could also imagine that could be a Slack message, a email, a, uh, a ServiceNow ticket. Uh, it could update a tweet, whatever you happen to automate. We're just doing debug messages for simplicity. Or fix web. If the website is down, we're going to run the fix web. And this is actually going to fix and put something back. Now, again, this is an example. This is a two task playbook. So this is not meant to all be an all encompassing web server fixing tool. It's just trying to show you how you can plug it in and fix things and spark your imagination for what's possible with event driven automation. So in this case, again, we're going to kick off the rule book. So this time the URL, uh, URL check example, we're going to kick this off in the Ansible rulebook tab. So I click and run. And now it is waiting. Now what's neat here is the web server is already running. Um, in fact, if I go in here, um, let's see what web server is running. Yes, it's I, I literally guessed because uh, my friend Colin and Nuno set this up for me. It's HTTPD service is running and it looks great. And that's what we see over here is all is up and well, and it's, it's just waiting. So it's just seeing that over and over again, that it's fine. And it's kind of just repeating that uh, that loop within the workflow where it says everything's fine, keep checking, keep checking, everything is fine. Um, in fact, we could do the same thing here and curl the web server and see that it's fine. This is a basic page, woohoo. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna log in here and we are going to break it on the web server. So I'm gonna, in this case, just remove the index.html page. I didn't mean to copy that, so ignore that. Um, and in the rule book, we'll have noticed at some point, oh, the website is down. And this time it ran a different playbook. It changed. Um, and you know, hopefully the Ansible is item potent. So it, it, we know something actually did change here. It didn't just check the status. And now everything's up and well again. And we can do the same thing here as we can actually see that that web server is fine and it's getting that page again. So very cool. Uh, very simple example of it doing healing or self-remediation. But you can see how important that is because before, if you didn't have some sort of programmatic way to do this, you would have to schedule these checks. And once it sees it, you would have to enact it. So if you were scheduling every hour, you'd have to wait up to 60 minutes for it to actually go fix that. But with event-driven automation, it happens just as it happens. So this is an extremely important tool. That concludes the demo. For more information, check out Ansible.com and click on the event-driven Ansible developer preview. Thank you.